look to. If you have your song books, just turn to page 250. Go to 250. Uh, I meditate on these words as we sing this song. I pray that it's a blessing on page 250. Says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, 
not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. The Lord said there's going to be a famine in the land. The famine isn't going to be of bread and water. A lot of people have to be in America, because we got everything here. All the bread and water, and if you need a little assistance, our good government will be glad to help you. As long as you meet their prerequisites, you got it. But this famine here is something that God is going to send that nobody else is going to be able to help. It's going to be a famine of the word of God. We live in a time now where that famine is happening, if y'all don't know. There is a shortage of God's truth. There is a shortage of God's word going forth. It's to the extent to where a lot of people don't even want to hear right now because it's such a famine in the land. But we thank God of heaven that he has prepared a place for his saints that love him. Amen. The same way that he had ravens bringing bread to the prophet of God. Amen. The same way that he had that widow in place so where she was able to provide his needs. God is able to provide your needs Amen. if you trust himself. So no saints of God. Yes, there is a famine in the land. Know well that there are many that are going to be famished and hungry. And you're going to have to carry that bread of life with you. And you're going to have to give as God leads. But he said, cast not your pearl before swine. We're going to deal with a little bit of these things today. When we look at Matthew, the 21st chapter, starting at verse 28. Matthew 21, 28 reads as following. But what think you? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, Oh, I go, sir. And he went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him the first. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and he believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye seen it, repented not afterwards that ye might believe him. There was a man that had two sons in this parable. And one said he wouldn't do the work. He said, I ain't going. <laughs> I don't know if he had other plans. I don't know if he was just lazy or sorry. But whatever reason, he told his daddy, I ain't going to do the work today. But the Bible says afterwards he repented. He thought about that thing and then he went. Then he had another that was quick to volunteer. He said, son, I need y'all to go work. I'll go, daddy, I got you, I'm going to go. He didn't even go. He did his own thing. And Jesus asked him, he said, which of these two did the will did the right? Which of these two did the will of the Father? Which one do you think uh, uh, was the right one? And, and those, those scribes and Pharisees and Jew elders of that day, they recognized, they said, hey, you know that first. I, I bring this parable up because when we read this story, we are all one of these two sons. When we read this story, we're all one of these two sons. See, God calls us, and some will say no, and then later on realize, you know what, I need to get to the work of the Lord. I didn't want to do this, I didn't feel like doing it, I didn't feel like being bothered, but I know God going to give me power, I need, I need to repent and do the work. Then there's another group that will be like, hey, I go, God sent me. And it's like, I ain't going to show, y'all going to be left out of cold. We have to be careful and figure out which son we're going to be. Amen. Because we all qualify for one of these two sons. <laughs> I remember when I wasn't saved. I was walking, I was working at Sun Trust Bank. I remember that year. It was a short job. I didn't work there very long. <laughs> so Micah had a habit of quitting jobs whenever the music called, and I wouldn't even try half the time. So I'm working at SunTrust, and SunTrust requires you to dress up, so I couldn't wear what I usually wore when I was a rapper, the baggy clothes and all. No, 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 you weren't a size 60 that day. You were wearing to fit. So I'm walking down the street, and I'm just in my little suit, thinking I'm just a little banker fella. And a lady walks up and says, you look like a preacher. I said, oh, don't you say that. Don't you ever call me that. I'm mad. I'm a rapper. I'm no preacher. Like, that was something you're proud of. And I went my way with an attitude. Like, how dare she call me a preacher? That game messed up, baby. 
See, I didn't want to do. And there were things that God required of me that I didn't want to give up. I said, oh, no, Lord, no, no, this, this has been part of me. This is what I know. You're going to take that from me, too? I, I, I get saved. I repent. I, I got to get this up, too. You have to be like one of them two sons. You might say no at first. You might have made up your mind and decided, Michael, let this go. See, that second son was quick to volunteer. You got to boy, they'll jump up quick. They'll be ready. Oh, I've been saved one day. Can I be a preacher? <laughs> you got to say 30 minutes ago. Can I leave quiet? Maybe uh, a deacon or something. And then when it's time to show up, and family members are getting sick, and people can't come, where they at? I don't know, brother, did he call? Uh-uh. Who's over that ministry? Well, sister was, but she ain't here no more. What are we supposed to do now? See, they'll say, yeah, quick, but they won't show up. <laughs> We're all one of these two sons. God desires for us to be the one that will repent and do the work. And when Jesus asked them which one, they knew. They said the first was the right one to do. He said, I say unto you, the publicans and the harlots were going to the kingdom before y'all. What? What do you mean by that? The people that you thought was just so bad and the worst of the worst, they'll hear that word because it's a family and they're hungry. They're going to repent and turn their heart around, and they're going to run all the way in because of whom much is forgiven, they won't really feel guilty about it. They won't. They won't be quick to do the will of the Lord. See, he said, John came to you in the way of righteousness. He showed him you had a messenger who came to you all the way of righteousness. You didn't believe him. So when the publicans and the harlots heard John, they said, man, this is the truth. We need to change. And they began to come. He said, and y'all saw it. You saw the people's lives change. You saw the people come in, and they began to change the ways they were. And you still didn't repent. You still didn't want to believe it. What are we saying here today? Some of you know it to be true. You go on to family and you try to witness and share a good word. Some of you go on to spouses. Some of you go on to sisters and siblings. Some of you go on to children and you try to tell them about the word of the Lord and they look at you like you're speaking Greek. They don't want to believe it. But that same word that you told your family, you can go tell a stranger in the street. And they're so happy to hear it. They're so in love with the word. Oh my God, you you bless me so much. You, you're such a light in my life. And you're like, why my own family? What happened? Right, right. But see, he said John was a righteous man. Y'all saw the works he did. Y'all saw the people come. John didn't. I don't know what they didn't do. He said that they didn't repent afterwards, that they might believe him also. The key to you believing, you're going to have to repent. You gotta repent. The latter verse showed the heart's condition. The condition of those people, they just didn't want to believe. It didn't matter. John was righteous. They saw the people's lives change. It didn't matter. They just didn't want to believe. It was the heart condition on display. Whew. So, what are we saying today? I know last Sunday the pastor preached a great message letting us know if you don't use your gift, God going to give it to another let me tell y'all something. I heard that word. I said, well, I wasn't planning on singing. But Mike can't sing. I got up there and sang. I said, we're going to lead the worship today. <laughs> because I don't want them to remove what little bit I do have. Amen. No, we got to get to the work. Every time we hear a prayer request, just as sister shared today of her brother. We've had different sisters whose brothers have been incarcerated. Just as we hear these requests, these are opportunities God is laying out for us to do. Yeah, you check this out. We got a sister who lost some sons, a son and some other young men in a, in a car wreck doing a robbery. This was an opportunity God put in place for us to be the church. We wake up and say, God, use me. God, use me. God's like, hello. I got to put on a billboard. It's right there in your face. We have members that have struggled. I thank God for y'all that gave and blessed my family last week. We have members that are hurting. Wives that are sick, husbands that are, are not sure where they want to be right now, and we need to support and love and help one another. The work is right here before us. Amen. How are we going to say we love a God who we can't see? We can't love our brothers and sisters who we see daily. How are we going to tell somebody, be clothed and be warm and be blessed? We'll pray for you, but we didn't take care of their temper. Now, God has blessed us with an abundance of wealth, both in the Word. Some of us blessed financially. Some of us may lack financially, but we blessed where we're able to do use of our limbs and can work because the other people are bound in other ways. And all the joints work together. Amen. God has fit us together. We stuck. <laughs> we stuck. Oh, well, what if I want to be 
go to the Well, you can be cut out of the kingdom, or you can be cut into the kingdom. Cut the sin out, get cut into the kingdom. God wants to use you. I had to make the title. I don't have one, but if that was the title, it would be God wants to use you. What are you going to do about it? God wants to use you. There is not one soul in this room right now that is here by accident. There's not one soul in this room right now that's like, oops, I didn't mean to be here. No, God intended for you to be here. He intended for you to hear this for a reason. Because there is something that he needs for you to accomplish in this life. Don't let your eyelids close for that last time you didn't do what God wants you to do. That's, that's not what we want you to be. My love and my heart for you is that you will fulfill the will of God. To the glory of God. He may not have called you to preach. He may have called you with the gift of helps. I want you to be the best helper, Holy Spirit filled, able to meet the need of every saint and ain't you come across. Because that's what God calls you to be. Amen. If he gave you the gift of administration, I want you to run it and run it well by the Spirit of God. Amen. It ain't got to be in the education. It ain't got to be in pride in what God gave you. If he gave you the spirit of evangelism, I need you to get out here with me. We got to hit these streets, these corners, these places. Because, boy, the world is dark. It is a famine in the land. Amen. You got to ask yourself, is them two sons, why didn't he go? Why didn't he go? People will try to make excuses as to why they won't go. We're going to remove a few excuses today. Some say, I'm too young, Brother Micah. God can't use me. I'm too young. Look at Jeremiah, the first chapter, starting at verse 6. This is Jeremiah speaking. Then said I, Ah, oh Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Y'all see that Jeremiah excluded himself because he a child. The Bible let us know out of the mouths of babes. I done heard some children say some truths and hurt some feelings. That's right. Remember I was at a camp meeting one time and the preacher got to preaching? Poor brother, he started making up stuff that wasn't in the Bible. He said, yeah, God gave Adam the power to create the animals. Adam named and spoke to Adam, and poof, the animal appeared. This is what he preached right from that pulpit. And I was like, oh. And you would think you would have to, you know, chill the kids, cover their ears, run around. The children heard the well. So after church, God would have his soul. God was friends with the brother. We were talking. And one of the young people were there, their mother. Out of all the people he could have asked, he looked at the child and said, Did y'all enjoy the word today? What did you think about it? Oh, my. We didn't, we didn't even get an answer. She said, well, it was all right. You said some things that were true, but you said some things that wasn't true also. <laughs> he said, what? She said, yeah. He said, well, can you prove it? She said, do you have your Bible? <laughs> she said, yeah. <laughs> she said, turn to Genesis. You said that Adam created animals. According to the scripture, God brought the animals and he named them. One of the other elders said, don't you dare correct the minister. And I said, whoa, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. She has a point. Because I know it's too. <laughs> and the young lady spoke up. He, he said, no, she's right. She's right. I, I need to study more. Now, if you missed that in Genesis, we got a problem. There is a famine in the land today. Y'all, we need to make sure that we are equipped and we are ready. But Jeremiah had the same excuse as some of the young people. I'm too young. God can't use me. Verse 7, it says, But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So the Lord let it be known, you know what, don't tell me you're no child. God ain't trying to hear that excuse. I'm young. Okay, and you good and young, that means you good and ready to be used. Because you've been in the tree while it's young. Boy, you've all the time been in the old tree. But in the young tree. God know why Jesus, know why Jesus suffered the little children to come unto me. You want to use your children. You don't have a word too. You don't have to wait till you're 17, 18, 16, 14, what's that, 12, to start exercising your calling. If God has called you as a child, you need to speak up, stand up, and be counted. God wants to use you today. He said, don't be afraid of their faces, for I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to tell you what to say. You got another group that'll say, well, brother, I'm, I'm just not a good speaker. I'm not that quick on my feet like that. And I, I just, I get nervous when I gotta get in front of people. We got one for you, too. Go to Exodus 4th chapter. We're going to help you out. We're going to remove a few excuses today. Exodus 4, starting at verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here for two, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. 
He said, hold on, Lord, don't use me. I, 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 I'm slow in speech and I'm a slow tongue. I'm not, I'm not eloquent. I can't use big words. God didn't say that thou shalt use big words to preach this gospel. That ain't what he said. He didn't say you got to go to seminary school and get your PhD before you can get up and preach for me. You just got to be humble and have a willing heart. You got to be willing to love people and love God and tell folk the truth no matter what it's going to cost you. You got to be willing to say, Lord, if nobody else will go, please send me. I'll do it. You know, you got to have a willing heart. See, Moses came with all these excuses, and God came right back in verse 11 and said, The Lord said unto him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? What's your excuse? I'm the reason why these folk can't hear. They can't see. Folk blind, folk dumb, folk ain't got a good sense. God said, I created them. You think I didn't know that when I created them? I knew when I made them, they weren't the bright, bright one. I need them to be humble so I can use them, though. I need you to go forth to do what I told you to do. Verse 12, he said, Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and shall teach thee what thou shalt say. God will teach you what to say. The very hour that you think you don't know what to say, if you rest in the Spirit and trust the Holy Ghost, God will give you what to say that very hour. Stuff start coming up, scriptures, you be like, whoa, where did that come from? Because you've been reading and studying and praying and fasting and seeking the Spirit of God. So when your day comes, and it's going to come, you name the name of the saint, your day going to come. Where people going to start to question, they're going to try to challenge you. But it's the Spirit of God in you that they're after. And you have to rest on the Spirit of God and allow Him to give you words to say. So we can't say it's because we're not good speakers today. We can't say because we're children we can't go. Do we need to go home? Kind of some say, well, I'm a woman. No, no, God used women. We had Deborah, we had the whole other prophetess, we had others. Esther went forth. You can't say because of that. You can't say because, you know, I failed so many times. You know, you have David. You have a whole bunch of people that messed up royally in Scripture, and God was able to restore Amen. and get them ready to do the work. So no matter what place you're in today, God is beckoning and calling, I need to use you. I need you to be ready, good and ready. We need to press the battle to the gates. If we go to Matthew, the 28th chapter, starting at verse 18. Very familiar passage of scripture, Matthew 28, Psalm 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus said, some power given me? He said, a little bit of power? Well, I got power to help you only when you're in the heat of the battle. No, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What's going to stop you? You've got to ask yourself, well, if Jesus has all power both in heaven and earth, that covers everything. What can stop you? The only thing that can stop you is you. If you allow the devil to trick you and distract you, you will stop yourself. That's right. But Jesus said, I have all power. All we got to do is rest in him. Amen. He said, come unto me. You that are heavy laden, y'all got these burdens, these problems, give it to me. I give you rest. I'm meek and lowly. Learn me. You'll find rest for your souls. Jesus is calling and saying, hey, look, bring me the problem. Bring me the burden. Now take my yoke on and do what I told you to do. Go out into all nations. Preach the gospel. You talk about uh, uh, being a world changer, a life changer, turning things around. Go out and preach the gospel into all nations. Amen. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We read time and time again what the scripture is saying about a time where we should be teachers. We have needed somebody got to teach us again. God is wanting to push and move you further out. It's just like when you see them birds and the mother bird is pushing the baby to the edge of the nest. Some of us don't want to stretch the wings. You're going to get pushed right out of the nest. You're going to fly and die. Spread the wings, we'll push you right on out that next. God is trying to prepare you and get you ready. Because there's a world out here that don't know the truth. There's kids that are growing up today that haven't been taught the basic prayers. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's a foreign language to them. There are children out here that think 
the, 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 you know, the, the Nicki Minaj is the standard for females. They think it ain't true. There are children who think Real Housewives of Atlanta, D.C., Chicago, Dallas, throw a city in there. That that's what the standard is for how women are to act and conduct themselves. There are young men that feel like, well, she need to have hers together before I come. I'm, I'm a work in progress. She better have herself together. And they think that's normal. You tell them they need to get a job, the imaginary boogeyman won't let them. I would get a job, but the man is holding me down. <laughs> my brother, I had the position, but the man took that supervisor position from me, my brother. How many times were you late? Well, about 15 times. 15 times and how, how many weeks? In one month. You were late 15 times a month and the man pushed you down? The spirit of laziness pushed you down. A lack of wisdom to set your alarm clock a little earlier pushed you down. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? You can't have it both ways. We can't say I can do all things through Christ Jesus, but the man ever be there. What man? And we want the conquerors. Now, if you want to talk about the system being set up against you, that's why the system is set up against the Christians too. The Dex was against you the moment you named the name of a saint. They ever said, oh man, I lost another one. Oh boy, we got to wreak havoc. Come on, you, 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 and you. Let's get her and let's get him. <laughs> you don't care who he used either. So the deck was already stacked against you once you decided that you wanted to profess the name of a Christian. Now what the Bible said, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. As Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise to suffer. So we knew it was coming. I hope you knew. I don't think nobody tricked you into salvation. We didn't promise you a million dollars once you got saved. We told you straight up, you're going to get a life of suffering. The devil going to work in people. It's going to hurt. Saints of God, it's going to hurt people that you trusted, that you thought was your best of friends. They will turn on you because of salvation. See that blood? It makes a separation there. It do. People be like, man, you know, I got, I got problems with all these folks. It's a sin problem. It's the sin of their life. They won't allow them to see the truth of the word. The Bible says that the, the, the carnal mind is not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can it be. Why are we expecting carnal minded people to follow the laws of God when they don't even understand? You, you, know, you talk about hurting yourself. You, you keep waiting on them folks to do right, you know they ain't safe. You just got to arm yourselves and your minds. Love them anyway. Still give them the love of Christ. Try to plant as many seeds as you can as God gives you opportunity. And what that does is it begins to work faith in them. And when it begins to work faith in them, one day, Lord willing, their eyes will come open. Amen. And oh, when they see what kind of person they were. I remember I had some, some, some young people tell me some of the things I said when I wasn't saved. I felt so bad. I was like, brother, I'm sorry. Well, it's okay. No, you weren't saved. No, but still, you feel bad. Yeah. You know, Jesus. It might have been some positions that you took against your spouse, but boy, when you get saved and you see the light of truth, you feel bad. Things that you shouldn't have said, you wish you could take back, but it's out there now. But you know what I tell people? I say this, I heard it from one of the saints here. You have a lifetime to prove it. You can say you're sorry. And that'll give you a band-aid for a moment. Oh, I forgive you, you know. But you got a lifetime to prove you're really sorry. You really tell God, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I was out there beating people over the head and fighting and robbing and doing whatever. I felt guilty. I said, Lord, forgive me. My dad had a problem about that beating about the head and robbing no more. Don't get me wrong. People tempted me to go outside the head, but I just rebuked the devil. But I haven't felt the desire to go hit nobody. Touch them. Why? Because I felt bad about what I had done. I really was sorry. I have a lifetime to prove that I'm going to be a changed man. It didn't just start just one day and then I can go back and come back and go. No, 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 no. You have a lifetime to prove till you die. Jesus said, I'll be with you to the end of the world, to the end of the earth. I'm going to be with you to the very end. It ain't like he left. So you just got to go hard as a true soldier and go on. But God is wanting to use you today. When we looked at that verse, and Jesus said he had all power, I'm fully persuaded he has all power. I'm fully persuaded that he's able. I'm fully convinced that all we have to do is trust and believe and obey, and he'll get us there. If we look at Matthew 8, I mean, I'm sorry, Romans 8, starting at verse 28, it says, And we know 
that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You're going through, and it hurts. But if you love God, and you are really trying to fulfill his call in your life, the Bible says all things work together for good. They didn't count you. Your feelings was hurt. So when you begin to grow in God and you begin to get more love and grace in God and you find a young person is broken because they wouldn't count it and they're on the brink of suicide, you're able to give them a word. Brother, sister, right. I've been there. Right. I know what it's like to not be counted. I know what it's like to be left out in the cold and God has given me a heart of love. Well, I saw the issue. Because it takes God to open your eyes to see the suffering of people. You'll walk to and fro to your job and somebody may be in the corner just got through crying. They're trying to wipe off their mascara, and you're like, uh, I need them orders. Can we get this done? We got to meet production. If the spirit ain't leading, you overlook them tears. Either yeah, you'd be laughing. Oh, man, she's about to cry over that. Sorry, man, she got to keep moving. But when the spirit of God is on board, he'll tell that, that, that coattail, hey, you need to go see about that. Go pray with them during your lunch break. Go speak words of life over them. Let them know that I need to use them too. And they need to come into the home. See, the devil wants to try to distract you and keep you busy the way you can't do. Oh, yeah, he'll try to keep you where you can't do that. Because he don't want people's lives to turn around. But it says all things work together of the good. It says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So just letting you know, God knows our outcome. If you're going to respond to him or not, God already know. He knew from the foundation of the world who was going to choose him and who wasn't. And if he knows you're going to choose him and he begins to work in your life, then if he called you, he's going to help sanctify you to get you right to fulfill the work. You yeah, make sure you glorify when it's time for you to die and go see him in glory. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared out his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God was willing to let his son die for you, why would he withhold the way for you to get to heaven? Right. He gave up a son of glory for you to make it. He allowed his own son to die for you to make it. So yes, he's going to give you what you need to make it. A lot of us had to build the materials. We just didn't get the instruction manual to start building. So when we start putting it together, it looked a little funny. We were like, something ain't working. I don't think I got all the right parts. No, no, no. You have the parts God intended you to have. You just tried to build without the manual. Take it apart. Read the word. Let him build you. And as he builds you, you build it the proper way. Then you're able to function in his kingdom. Let God build you. The suffering that you go through is just for a season. To build you to something greater. It says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Don't look for justification from man. <laughs> Don't look for people to give you a pat on the back and the cooler. If they do, that's good. Yeah, and amen. But Christ said, woe be unto you. All men do good. Eh? You need to know people going to argue out and talk about you. Just expect it. It comes with the territory. But if you love God and you begin to go through, he gave his own son for you, you recognize you're going to suffer just as Christ suffered. So let's just go ahead and go through. Because it's God... Who justifies? Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Christ is pleading on your behalf. He's saying, Lord, help the brother and sister make it today. Lord, give them their daily bread today so that they can make it. God, I love them. I want them to be with us when we build this mansion in the sky. Let's go ahead and work with them so that they can make it into the kingdom. Jesus is pleading for you today. God is fighting for you. The Bible says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, you want your problem do it? Or distress? Oh, I'm so stressed. I'm losing hair. I'm so stressed. You want to let that separate you from Christ? Or persecution? They after me on the job. But well, they're killing overseas. I don't have to suffer on the job by the choice. Eventually it'll come here. But if I got to suffer one way or another, I'm going to suffer the job. You had to come here. Or family? Okay, we're losing everything. We're hungry. Things going bad. Here come devastation. We're going to let us separate us from Christ, y'all. Or nakedness. We ain't got no clothes. Stuff getting too tight. 
I ain't got no money to buy no new stuff. We're going to let that separate us from Christ. I hope not. Apparel, a sword. We're going to let that separate us from Christ. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, but we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He covered the gambit of everything. He said, not height, not depth. Some people lose a loved one and they get mad with God. So you allow death to separate you from the love of Christ. It didn't have to be something. You could have uh, been happy and went on, you know. Somebody died, you know, Lord. You know, I, I enjoyed my time when they were here and tried to grow in grace. He said, nor death, nor life. We get that nor life. You're like, huh? Life is separate people. Yeah, folk get mad when folk get saved. You know, they like that, that other son. When, when, when there was two sons, another story in the Bible. Where the prodigal went and made a shipwreck. Then he came back and got it right. And the father happy. He's like killing his paddy cab, all the servants, everybody in the house happy. Paul said, what about the son? Who would have been here? He go outside, he mad with the dad. I've been here this whole time. I did everything right. And you never killed a paddy cab for me or my friend. Then he come, you know what he did? He was the worst. Why did you choose him? What's wrong with you, daddy? What's wrong with I do? Selfish. Oh, so selfish. God bless a saint with a car. You wonder why your brakes spill and why I ain't getting on the car. It ain't right. God has forsaken you. Man, y'all better stop. He loves you. He wants you to make it. You need to rejoice with them to rejoice. Be glad when they get a house. Yay and amen. So what if your roof is leaking? At least they got one. Now your brother and sister got a place to stay. Be glad when they're blessed. Be rejoicing for them. Your day may come, but even if it doesn't, you still need to have your joy and strength in the Lord. Right. See, if your joy and strength is in these possessions, oh boy, you're going to be let down every time. Right. All it takes for the IRS to come. You didn't pay no taxes, now your joy gone. All it takes for you to drive to the store and somebody break in the window because they saw your little charger, you didn't have another phone in there, but they thought it was. And they broke in the window, now your joy gone. They broke my window. Work is cheaper than that. You drop your phone. They don't have your little screensaver on. <gasps> oh, my phone. You ready to fall out somewhere. Jesus. Can't live because my phone is broken. <laughs> my charger don't work. My phone hold a charge. I can't live without my iPhone. I don't have as many Instagram followers as I used to have. People leaving me in your whole world. is shattered because your joy ain't in the Lord. Right. Right. Joy the things of this earth. This earth gonna perish with the use. It's gonna burn anyway. Yes. Trust me. If you if everything came with a timer and you knew that it was gonna go down and you saw on that timer, five, four, three, oh, the house blew up. I knew it was gone. You wouldn't put so much value in stock in it. Right. If you knew that car, if it was like this has a two-year limit, and after two years it will self-destruct. You wouldn't be putting you wouldn't be wiping a diaper, cleaning it all perfectly, would you? That car, I ain't no point washing it. I got three more months, that thing gonna blow up in there. <laughs> this earth is gonna melt with fervent heat. It's all gonna be destroyed. Why are we holding on to it like it's gonna be here forever? Right. It's gonna be gone. Ain't no point worrying about this stuff. You're gonna be gone. It's the saddest thing to see people holding on and death is knocking on the door. Doctor can say you got cancer, you got three more months to live, and we still hold on to this stuff. What about my job? What about my position? Forget them, you better worry about your soul. Where you gonna go? <laughs> Cause they still gonna open them doors. Whatever day it is. What's it? September third. September third. That was your last day at twelve o'clock today. You better believe them doors gonna open September fourth tomorrow at twelve o'clock. Like clockwork. We put them jobs on such a high pedestal sometimes. Bosses and people talk to me in the kind of way. Well, gotta have a job. Cause I don't have a job like job is God. No, no, no. Let the job go. You better go to God, your source. Recognize the difference. God is able. God is able. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Okay, so he lets us know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That we are able, um, not death, nor height, or any other creature can separate us from our Lord. Amen. From there, we want to go to Luke 12. Luke 12. Start at 
starting at verse 13. And one of the company said unto them, Master, speak to my brother, that he may divide the inheritance with him. And Jesus said unto them, Man, who hath made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. See, this man came to Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, I got power. Make this man divide my father's inheritance. This must be mine. Jesus, Jesus said, man, who make me a judge or divide over you? I ain't getting that. No. <laughs> Because he realized that, you know, y'all, that ain't worth right now. Right now, the kingdom is at hand. I'm going to get y'all to hear what I'm preaching right now. I didn't come for that purpose. I'm going to judge later, but not that. <laughs> I'm here to give y'all a word. <laughs> he said, take heed. Don't worry about no covetous. Some people are covetous. They're greedy. They, are, they know what's right to do, but they're not going to do right. For real. People are like that. People are selfish. And it's not by chance that he gave this parable right after he expressed that. Because there are people just like that man that said, man, look, I got plenty, but I want more. I got the house, I got the car, I got the crib, but you know what's better than a million? What? A billion, I need more. <laughs> and they want to get more. Then they get a billion. Well, is that good? No, no, you know what's better than a billion? What? A trillion, I need more. And you give them a trillion, and they still trying to figure out, I can't go past a trillion. A gajillion, we're going to make one. I need more. There's just people out there in this world like that. They just want more. And he said, eat, drink, and be merry. And now I got so much, I ain't even got to worry no more. I got retirement. I got CD accounts. I got 401k coming. You know, I got my pension. I got all these things, man. I could just buy me that car I always wanted. I think I'm going to get me a convertible. Let's just cruise to the beach all day. I might buy me a little spot in Florida and rent that out to some people and visit that every weekend. I'm going to live life on the God said, thou fool, your soul will be required of you this night. You might be cut short the next day. And all them provisions you made, all them plans you made, who, 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 who stuff that going to be now? You ain't going to get to enjoy it. Oh, we. So we have to be careful because we have people that are covetous. Did you know they, they, their whole mind, body, and soul has been, y'all Y'all see, you go on these Facebook posts, I mean, Instagram, more people telling themselves all the time. Mm -hmm. You go online and all you see is all them high-end cars and red-bottom shoes. And, and chains and all these things hanging and they looking like a million bucks but you know they ain't got the 35 cents to their name but they just covetous, they gotta have all that you're like, girl, you, you must took them there must be your prom pictures, hair just done and you know, good away, you had done like that in years but you can post it in whole life cause it look good and you want people to see it and there's nothing wrong with it, it look good but you gotta have an understanding that you can't be covetous just wanting the stuff just yeah. to want it <clears throat> You know, the moment it's on the cover of a magazine, I gotta go buy it. You might want to practice that. Let me wait 24 hours before I make this purchase. This may not be necessary. Why would I spend a thousand dollars on a pair of shoes? Yes, they have shoes cost a thousand, some eight hundred. It's got the same cushion as them fifty dollar shoes. It's gonna meet the same dirt that them fifty dollar shoes gonna meet for the same purpose. You gonna pivot in them and turn them just like you do them twenty five dollar shoes. And at the end of the day, the red bottom is going to wear out, and it's going to be a black soul, just like them $25 shoes. Buy that watch. Oh, it's a nice watch. Very expensive watch. But you know what's going to happen? That battery going to die on that watch, just like the one that was in that Conseco. At yeah, the time, it's going to be the same thing. Could have been a Swatch watch. It's going to be the same battery that's going to die. And you're going to be at the same Radio Shack or other store if they still have Radio Shack. Purchasing the same size battery for the same price. Only difference is this guy got a little more money in his pocket because he didn't buy the big watch. It, a man's substance is not what makes him. A man's life shouldn't consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. It should be the fact that you are doing the will of the Father and that you have God 
Because God said everything belongs to me. And if you have need, all you have to do is ask him. Sometimes we hard on ourselves for various reasons. Some people are hard because they just feel like they're unworthy. I don't want to ask God for nothing because he saved me. That was enough for me. God bless you. We pray that he raises you up. Lift up your heads. Oh, you be with us and genuine. Well, those that weary of heart, God loves you. You can ask him. Some don't ask because we know we've been disobedient. But we didn't do what we're supposed to do. So we don't want to ask because it's like going to your daddy when you know you didn't do what you're supposed to do. And you don't want to hear the lecture. But go ahead and hear the lecture. Ask for forgiveness. And then you can ask. But know that God loves you. He's concerned with you. God is wanting you to make it. And he wants to meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory. I'm fully persuaded that God is not going to lie to us and say that he's able to meet the need the very hour. If you were to fight your life, start reading about David and Goliath. That boy took a stone and slayed a giant. Some of us scared of a person six foot four. We talking giant. That boy took a stone in him. Child. And even later on, you see that God still bless him. He says, Saul's killed his thousands. David's killed tens of thousands. He'll still be with you. Don't be afraid of them giants. Right, you square for that devil and fight. Let him know. I'm not, I'm not worried about you, devil. You're going you to get there. I'm going to get you. Let's go to our last couple of scriptures. Genesis 39. I want to point out something for all of you that are going through today. I pray that this blesses you. Genesis 39. There's something the Lord has shown me in my studies. Starting at verse 1. Genesis 39. 1. It says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, of the officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had put into his hand. And it had come to pass from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught what he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Joseph, for those who know the story, his brothers betrayed him and sold him into slavery. Joseph didn't really do nothing but tell him some dreams that God gave him. Boy, they didn't like Joseph no more. Oh, Joseph. And he went through many years of suffering. Potiphar came and bought him, supposed to be a servant. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. And as Joseph served and went through, God prospered whatever he did. Turn to Genesis 41, starting at verse 37. It says here, and this is after Joseph interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. It says, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him his vestures in fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. What did we just see happen? We saw a man who was in slavery, in the pits of slavery, and God was with him. And even though he was in one of the worst conditions known to man, God made him a ruler. And then when he ended up getting lied on and ended up going to jail, and he went before Pharaoh, God made him ruler again. It didn't matter if it was Potiphar's house or Pharaoh's house because he had the Spirit of God resting upon him. If you have the Spirit of God resting upon you, the same blessings will be given to you. You'll be able to work those jobs and you'll find them trying to promote you and you're like, I ain't asked for no promotion. Why are they trying to promote me? Because everything you do will prosper. 
And they'll see that the Spirit of God is upon you and that you're going to do right. Because one thing about these jobs, one thing I love about these managers, supervisors, a lot of them lazy. They do not want to do no work. And if they see you a good worker, I'm like, oh, that guy there, you get him. What's his pay? You need to increase that. Go on, go on with him. Better yet, sit him by my office. Sit him by my office. Let them learn. Because they, 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 they're lazy. They're put the work off on you. But they're doing it because they recognize that there is something in your life that you not like the others. You don't care. You're not going to leave the work undone. You want to make sure it gets done. Because you work as though you're working unto the Lord. You have a genuine concern. When they see that, oh, this person's respectable. He done went and got married and he trying to raise a family and do right. I mean, I need to make him my next manager. We need to keep him. He's a family man. I hear them say that. He's a family man. We keep him. Because they know the other one's going to be going to the club sometimes and they might miss work. That family man know I got a baby to feed. I got to be there. I got to be there. So you gotta you gotta gear your mind, start knowing that the same way Joseph went through, be it slavery, be it in freedom. He served God, he allowed God to lead, and he was promoted. He was put in charge. He said, not a hand or foot gonna come inside or out of Egypt. Unless you say something. You second only to Pharaoh. God is able to do it for us today, saints of God. Allow God to use you. It says, humble yourselves. And God will promote you in due time. Let God raise you up to the person he needs you to be. We're going to go to Luke, the ninth chapter. Luke 9. And this is going to be our last scripture. Luke 9. It says, start at verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither stage, nor script, neither bread, neither money, neither have you two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter in, there abide and thence depart. And whosoever will receive you, when you, who will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And he departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. We read it where God told him, don't take no script, don't take no paperwork, don't, you ain't got to be prepared. Because some of us are scared. Lord, what am I going to say? I need to have me, I, I ain't got no tracks. I can't witness because I don't have a lot of tracks. No, 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 no. You can still witness. Lord, Lord, I, I ain't got enough money. He just told him, don't take no money. Don't worry about the money. You just need to go out and do it. And when you go out and do, God bless you. And he said that he gave them power over devils. Authority over all devils. God gives you the same authority today. Christ said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If you find yourself in a situation where a person ain't doing right, recognize it's the spirit in them and start talking to that devil. Don't talk to them no more. Talk to the devil in them. Let them know, I see you. What do you mean you see me? No, I see you. Boy, I'm right here. No, no, no. I see the real you. I know who that is at work. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And you start binding the devil, see these personalities don't start changing. Start anointing some things. I've anointed some doors, and you know, anointing some desks and stuff. Cause you work with some folk, you know, what kind of demonic influence they under? And them spirits you working with them. And you start anointing some stuff. If you work from home, anoint your phone. You know, them devils talking through your ear when they come through the phone. Whatever you got to do, anoint some stuff and start rebuking and praying against it. You better start anointing people when they sleep. Husband and wife don't do right when they sleep. Knowing their shoes, the Lord bless them where they go. If they're going to do wrong, may they find no pleasure in it. May they be disgusted. If they go to do wrong, may it make them sick. To where they yield and say, I yield. Lord, I serve you. I'm free. I pray them kind of prayers. I let my mom pray a prayer on me. I've shared it a couple of times. I think y'all know already. Some of y'all may not. My mom prayed a prayer on me. I, I was not saved. I was, I was rebelliously not saved. I'm talking about getting shot at, car accident, still didn't want to get my heart to God. Just right, just right. Just like that other son. I never wanted to do it. And, and it got so bad, she said, Lord, whatever it takes, save my son. She said, the moment she prayed that in her backyard, the devil came and said, what if he end up in a wheelchair, paralyzed? What if he gets shot? And she said, for a moment, she got scared. She said, I don't want to see my son suffer. But she says, you know what, Lord? Even still, save my son. You got to make up your mind, whatever it's going to cost, save him. They may lose a limb, but save him. They may lose their sight, but save them. Because they need salvation and they don't recognize it on their own. God has a way of humbling and breaking you down to show you you need salvation. 
They might lose a job. It might get hot. Oh, it'll get hot in the fire because you lose everything. But they'll get saved because they recognize they need the God of heaven to get them another one. I pray don't come to it. But Lord, even yet so, save my love. I'm going to ask you to stand this time. I got a letter from a guy named Marcus E. Graham at the safe house. Marcus asked for prayer. He didn't specify what he's going through. He just said, my name is Marcus. My faith and belief um, has almost dwindled through the years. I'm going through tribulations, and it seems that instead, you know, there's more and more trials. I thank the Lord for every obstacle and for every error. Remember me. He wants to be remembered in prayer. No, we got to get out. There's people just like him. Some of them ain't going to write us a letter. You just going to walk by and see them. You're going to go to Walmart and you're going to see some people out there with their kids and they cry in the middle of the street because they didn't got this place and they need to stay at a motel. They need Jesus. You got people in your family, young children don't want to do right, just keep getting in trouble. Seem like the police looking for them around every corner. They need salvation because death is trying to claim this song.